What's up, everybody? Welcome to today's 10 minute squat mobility warm up. All right. So, if you know you're going to be squatting later on in your workout, this mobility session is going to be perfect for you. Your ankles, your hips, everywhere is going to feel great and primed and ready for your squats. All you'll need is some space around you and one light dumbbell or kettlebell. All right. Let's get to work. All right, so I want you to get down on one knee, your left knee down and your right knee up. I want you to swing that right foot off to the side. All right, now from there, you're gonna grab your right heel with your left hand and your right toes with your right hand. All right, and all you're gonna do from here is you're gonna glide back and forth as far over your toes as you can and bring it back. All right, I'll show you from this side. All right, so right here, glide as far forward as you can and bring it back, all right? So we're gonna spend about a minute here on each side. And your main goal here is to try to get your knee towards your third, fourth, and fifth pinky toe, all right? So I don't want you to let that knee kind of come in and collapse inwards, but do your best to try to push that knee off to the side, all right? Because that's gonna be uh, more mimicking the squat pattern, all right? So back and forth, perfect. And the ankle mobility is gonna be a huge player in terms of how low you can go in your squat. So this is why we're starting off with some movement in that ankle joint, all right? Now for the last 20 seconds here, I want you to place your hand on your knee and I want you to push that knee as far forward as you can and just hold it there at that end range. All right, I'll show you from this side again. So you're right here, push as far forward as you can and the more that knee goes over the toe, the better in this situation, okay? All right. Just hold that position, put some pressure down, and try to get some mobility through this ankle. You might get some Achilles stretching as well, and that's all great, all right? And let's switch sides. So this time, right knee down, left knee up. Let's swing that left foot off to the side. You're gonna grab the heel of your left foot with your right hand, grab the toes with your left hand, and drive that knee forward, and bring it back, all right? So it's oscillate back and forth, getting some reps here. Perfect. So you often hear about people saying that your knees shouldn't go over your toes, but in fact, it's actually a very functional position. Every time you go upstairs, every time you go downstairs, every time you do anything remotely athletic or functional, your knees are gonna be going over your toes, and we wanna have that mobility to be able to do so, all right? So it's not necessarily about avoiding that pattern, it's about learning how to manage that pattern, being mobile in that pattern, and also strengthening that pattern in a careful, controlled environment. All right, now let's put some pressure on that knee. So push it down, and get some additional torque. All right, now my ankle mobility is fairly solid, so don't feel like you have to get your knees way over your toes. If you're over here, that's totally fine, all right? So just work within the range that you have, and eventually you'll be able to uh, creep further and further and further over towards your toes, all right? So don't feel like you have to be all the way out here just yet, all right? This will keep improving as long as you keep doing these sort of ankle mobility drills, all right? We'll stay here for about five more seconds and we'll move on into our Spider-Man hip rocks, they're called. Okay, now let's get into a push-up position. And what I want you to do is bring your left foot as far forward as you can, all right? And now from here, what I want you to do is just drop that back hip down, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna rock back and try to straighten out this leg. You might get even a little bit of a hamstring stretch. And then from there, I want you to rock forward and push this knee off to the side as you sink down, okay? Rock back and rock forward, all right? We're gonna get about 30 seconds on each side here. I'll show you from the front. So again, right here, you're gonna rock back and rock forward, driving this knee out, all right? So that knee out position is important because you want some length with your inner thighs. You wanna be able to push those knees out so that you can squat down low without running into your knees. All right, now keep on going for me. I'm just gonna demonstrate. If your knees are too close together, you come down, you're just blocked by the position of your legs, right? So if you get a little bit wider, push those knees a little bit wider, you're able to squat down without any issues. All right, so do your best here to push that knee out and get your chest up tall. 
All right, we got about five more seconds, and then let's switch sides. Should feel great all around the hips, right? Inner thighs, hips, hip flexors on the back leg, and switch sides. All right, same thing. Rock back, you get your hamstring. Rock forward, you get hip flexors, hips, inner thighs. Push that knee off to the side. You mimic that bottom of the squat position, and then bring it back. Awesome work. So we got the ankles. Now we've got some hip movement. Should already be feeling a lot more limber. Now again, same concept. You don't have to be this far up with your foot position. Let's say you're off to the side. That's okay. It's going to keep getting better and better as long as you keep doing these sorts of drills, all right? But your goal here is to get that foot as close to the hand as possible. All right, we got about five more seconds and we'll move on to the next drill. All right, cool. Next, we're gonna go into what's known as a wide stance rock on your forearms, all right? So let's get hands right below the shoulders, knees right below the hips. I want you to bring your knees out wider though, all right? So a wide stance. Now drop down towards your forearms, get your chest up nice and tall. I want you to sit all the way back towards your heels and then come all the way forward. Sit all the way back and come all the way forward. All right, so all this is, is a squat pattern, but you just happen to be on your knees and forearms. All right, so if you were to flip yourself up vertically, you're actually getting into the bottom of a deep squat position. All right, now keep on going back and forth. An important concept here is to get that chest up nice and tall, right? Try not to round over. Awesome work. Deep breath at the bottom here, relax. And then bring it all the way forward. All right, perfect. Now from there, we're gonna get into on your hands now, but still in that relatively wide stance. And all I wanted you to do is rock your way, or walk your way forward, walk your way back, and then push yourself into the bottom of a squat position with your hands forward like this. Don't worry too much about your lower back position. It can round as much as you want. Even your heels, they can lift up. Just do your best to get into as comfortable of a deep squat position as you can, all right? Now from there, walk yourself back, forward, and back, and push. Perfect, at the bottom position, do your best though to keep that chest up tall, as tall as you comfortably can and then bring it back. Awesome. All right. Now from here, let's get one more actually. This next rep, I want you to come down and now let's get your knees off the floor. All right, now we're introducing a little bit more challenge to your core. You're gonna walk your way back into the bottom of the squat without your knees ever touching the floor, okay? So getting more shoulders, more core, more total body involved here. All right, we got two more. I want you to walk your way forward all the way into a push-up position. Pause right here, and then rock yourself back to the bottom, hang out here. Come all the way forward, push-up position. And bring it all the way back. All right, now remember, if that was uncomfortable for you or a little bit too much to manage, just stay back down, knees on the floor, all right? So always just meet yourself where you're at. Don't try to fit some arbitrary ideal, all right? I'm just trying to give you some general guidelines and standards, but make sure that it works for you, all right? Now, final exercise, this is where the kettlebell and the dumbbell comes into play, all right? So grab that light kettlebell or dumbbell. We're gonna actually stand up now and go into what's known as goblet squat pry, all right? So the toughest squat that is, uh, that you're gonna be capable of, you know, eventually is going to be an overhead squat where there's a barbell or kettlebells or dumbbells overhead and you're gonna squat down. That's gonna be the most challenging squat variation. A uh, easier, more friendlier version is going to be a goblet squat because now that weight, instead of being overhead, is closer to your center of mass, all right? So get that kettlebell, get that dumbbell, bring it tight to your chest, all right? Now from here, what I want you to do, feet about shoulder width apart, flare your feet slightly out, 
And then from there, you're gonna slowly come down. Elbow should go between the knees and you're doing your best to push your knees off to the side, get that chest up tall and stand up. All right, shake it out. Let's do it again. Come down slowly. Come down. Good. Now this time, just shift side to side. All right, side to side. And you're doing your best to try to get lower and lower, prying your hips as you come down. And stand on up. Awesome. Now you know from that drill whether or not your feet were too wide or too close. So experiment, all right? So maybe you want to go closer, maybe you want to go wider. Again, meet yourself where you're at here and make sure that you just listen to your body's cues, all right? So I'm going to go a little bit narrower for mine. Come down, knees out wide, chest up tall, rock side to side. Yeah, that feels a lot more natural for me. Now, as you rock side to side, you're gonna feel some areas that feel maybe a little bit tighter than other areas. So let's say your right hip feels a little bit tighter. Just hang out there, just explore, figure out what's going on, and kind of spend some more, you know, some, some more care and attention in that area, and then bring it back to the other side, all right? So this is more of an exploration tool than just a pure mobility drill, all right? Last one, shake it out. Again, experiment with stance, come down, Push those knees out to the side, shift side to side. Awesome work, you're doing great. And stand on up. All right, so bring that kettlebell or dumbbell off to the side. This time just practice the body weight squat. All right, so come down, same rules apply. Hands go out, but knees pushed out. Squat down as low as you're comfortable, and then stand on up. All right, let's get a couple more. Squat down as low as you're comfortable and then come on up, all right? Now, keep on going if you want, but what you'll notice, your ankles, your hips, your inner thighs, just your overall squat pattern is gonna feel a lot more comfortable, a lot better, all right? So feel free to repeat this as many times as needed um, before a squat warm-up session, or just take the bits and pieces that you really liked and go from there, all right? But I hope this helped out, and until next time, sweat out, happiness in.